Welcome to the project. Name of this project is Continuous Integration on AWS. If you have gone through Continuous Int Integration project of Jenkins and Tools, then you know there is an extra overhead of managing Jenkins server, Nexus server, and SonarCube server. In this project, we are going to use some of the very cool AWS services where we can set up continuous integration very easily, very quickly, and we don't need to manage servers. I know that's pretty cool. So first, let's understand continuous integration and how you can achieve it by using AWS services. So this is the scenario. Let's say you have a product development and agile SDLC is in motion. So bunch of smart developers in an agile team will regularly make code changes. So there'll be multiple code changes every day. And all this code needs to be tested because this is what actually is building your product. So this code needs to be regularly built and tested. So usually in an enterprise, there will be a separate build and release team who will be doing this job of building, testing and releasing the code. Or if it's a small industry, then they'll be, it will be developers' responsibility to merge and integrate this code. So yes, there are regular code changes also called as commits or pull requests. Developers will be dependent on build and release team usually to test the code and move it to the next level in the release cycle. But not so frequently the code will be tested. If there are any bugs or error, it will be known late. Due to this, bugs and errors in the code keep accumulating. And let's say these got accumulated. A problem goes more deeper. Now developers need to rework to fix these bugs and errors, which is a time consuming process. And the teams would be already approaching the deadline. So product owners really need to test the code as fast as it's building. But that's not possible because the build and release team is doing a manual process. And also there are approvals and ticketing system in place which delays the process more further. So solution to this problem is regular build and test for every commit. So as soon as there is a code change, the code needs to be built and tested at the same time. But if the process is manual, this will not be possible. So you need to have an automated build and release process. And whenever there is a build and test of the code, the developer should get notified automatically. So if there is a build failure, if the code is not passing your quality gates, or if there is any bug, any kind of error, the developers will be stopped doing whatever they're doing and force they'll fix the code. So if you have such kind of automation framework in place, which will regularly build and test the code for every commit, then you're also removing dependency of developers from build and release team. This process is itself called as continuous integration process. And there are various ways of setting it. We can use continuous integration server or we can even use cloud services. Now, if you're willing to set up continuous integration server to set up a continuous integration process, then we know there will be an extra overhead of managing those servers. There'll be regular maintenance of the servers and you need extra time and effort to do it. If you don't want extra overhead of managing continuous integration server and remove all the operational overhead with it, then we can use some very cool AWS services to set up the continuous integration pipeline. So we'll set up a continuous integration pipeline on AWS. The first benefits of course we get is short MTTR, mean time to repair will be shorter. It's going to be agile. We're going to have no human intervention in this. If there is any fault that can be isolated very quickly. And if we are setting up it on AWS by using cloud services, then there is no operational overhead. 
so we get all the benefits of continuous integration without any operational overhead if you do it on cloud okay so let's see the aws services that we are going to use to set up this continuous integration pipeline starting with code commit which will be our version control system or virtual control system repository remote repository the next service we'll be using is code artifact maven is going to download dependency from code artifact repository code build to run our build process so we are going to run maven build we are also going to run code analysis sonar cube analysis so to run code analysis and to run the build process we'll use aws code build service AWS code deploy service will use to deploy our artifact and in this project we're going to deploy our artifact to S3 bucket. So we are not going to set up sonar cube server but there is a sonar cube sonar cloud which is a cloud based sonar cube server you can say. So we'll just create an account on sonar cloud and we're going to push all our result from code build to sonar cloud. Check style for code analysis we'll be using and finally code pipeline which is going to integrate all these jobs together. Okay, so let's achieve our goals. Before that we'll see the architecture of continuous integration pipeline. So first our developer are going to make code changes by using their IDE like IntelliJ or whatever they're using. There'll be a Git repository connected to it. And for that local Git repository, the remote repository will be our code commit. And whenever there is a code commit, the pipeline will get triggered. First, the code get pushed to AWS code commit, which will be like GitHub for us over here in AWS. So as soon as there is a new commit, the next job will trigger, which is a code build job but it is going to run sonar scanner and do code analysis. We'll, we'll also run check style from this job. For any dependency, it is going to download it from AWS code artifact. And then this job will also upload the reports to sonar cloud and get the result, which then will trigger co another code build job. And this will be building artifact. In this job, we're going to build our artifact, version it, and store it on S3 bucket. And also, if there is any dependencies required for Maven build, it will be again downloaded from AWS Code Artifact servers. So it's a pretty simple architectural diagram. Have a look once again. Pause the video if you want. I will run through the play once again. Okay, let's see the flow of execution now. First, we'll set up everything on AWS. So we log into AWS account. We're going to go, go to code commit service and we're going to take some action. We'll create code commit repository. We'll create an IAM user with code commit policy, which will have privilege to access this code commit repository. In locally on our machine, we are going to generate SSH keys. We are going to do SSH based login to this code repository. We'll exchange the keys with the IAM user that we created. So we set up the authentication to our code commit repository. Then we'll take source code from GitHub, download in our local machine, and then we're going to switch to code commit repository. So you'll also learn how to switch between two Git repositories with all the commits, all the history. Next, we'll go to code artifact service. In this service, we're going to create a repository which is going to store Maven dependencies. And for this also, we need an another IAM user which can access code artifact repository. We're going to install AWS CLI on our local machine 
and we'll configure it with AWS IAM access key and secret key. We'll run a command that is going to give us a token for authentication. Then we are going to update settings.xml file with the repository detail, with the code artifact repository detail. We'll update pom.xml file so it can fetch dependency from code artifact. Okay, now we'll start setting up the build job. The first build job we'll be setting up is going to be for Sonar analysis. So we're going to create an account on Sonar Cloud. We're going to generate a token over there. And this information of Sonar token and project key and all the Sonar details we're going to store in SSM parameter stores. So we don't need to specify them in the build job directly. Our build job is going to get those parameters from SSM parameter store. We'll create a build job. Our build job, when we create, we get a role and we're going to update this role with SSM parameter store access. So our code job, code build job can access SSM parameter stores. Then we'll create a notification. You can do it for SNS notification or Slack. We're going to do in this project SNS notification. Then we'll set up a build project which is going to build the artifact and deploy it to S3 bucket. We're going to update our pom.xml file with artifact versions with timestamp. So automatically our artifact will be versioned with a timestamp, with the current timestamp. So what are properties required for this build project like code artifact information? We're going to store all that properties in SSM parameter store again. And this code build job what we are going to create. We'll also need access to parameter store. So we're going to update the role code build role. Once we have all this ready, then we're going to finally connect everything with pipeline, AWS code pipeline, code commit job, test code job, which will be our sonar code analysis job and the build job, which will build the artifact and upload to S3 bucket. And then finally, we'll test our pipeline. We'll make a code change and we'll see how automatically this pipeline triggers and we get a well-tested artifact in S3 bucket.